Hey kids, how you doing? So I am out prepping to do a little camping. I'm going to go camping with my girls this next weekend and uh, unpacking from the last Renaissance fairs and the apocalyptic events that I've done. And uh, well, normal everyday camping for me. But anyways, I'll touch base on something that I've been meaning to talk about for a while. And that is a basic easy period setup. Um, period as in what I consider historically close to accurate to what I do. Um, is it 100% accurate as in this is how they slept back then? I don't know because I didn't live back then. Um, but um, I simply use a couple of wool blankets and uh, because I can. And I also use uh, a couple of furs on the ground for padding. Makes sense to me. This is how I do it. I'm not saying it's historically correct to how it was done back then because we were all dead then and or not alive then. So you figure that shit out. I don't know. I'm going to tell you. Anyways, um, this is how I've learned to do it with uh, using uh, two wool blankets and a couple furs on the ground. And then I also throw a ground tarp down there so to keep the the earth and the buggies out of the blankets and stuff like that but over the years of doing it this is how I've developed doing it and figured I'd share and show you how how I do it maybe it might inspire a couple of y'all to try some some more historically accurate camping or just ease of ability um, you go out and get them fancy fancy sleeping bags but mm -hmm. Um, a couple things about those sleeping bags that I've I've discovered in that was growing up when I was actually early, when I was earlier when I was growing up, I discovered that the the sleeping bags don't do well in water. I mean, if you get them wet, you're kind of hosed. Um, the the weird the neat thing about wool blankets is you can get them wet and uh, they retain that heat, so you're not going to freeze to death. You may be miserable, maybe a horrible night, but you should be able to get through it. You know, the body warmth in the blanket's gonna reflect back at you and uh, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna make it. Um, and that's one of the reasons, you know, I've always enjoyed the wool blankets. Also, they're, they're versatile. A blanket's more versatile than a sleeping bag. Um, I can pick up this, I can use the, the, the blanket as you know, an article of clothing or something like that, or as a, you know, a cape, a cape hardy or something to throw over my shoulders and keep me warm warmer um, I can also use it as a um, a shelter itself like that so if I want you know privacy or you know escape from the Sun um, I can use you know the blanket to set up set up it that way as well as a little shelter house but anyways um, I thought I'd touch base on it and show you a couple of the easy designs that I use and then uh, take it one step forward and throw a small little cot under there as well um, but other than that uh, I'll show you what I did. Hey kids, so here I am. I'm getting ready for a couple of my camping events and I'm doing what I consider period camping. Um, I've gone over some cold weather bed rolls and I figured I was just going to go over a variation of um, what I consider period camping. Um, I just use a couple blankets and uh, fold it up into a bedroll. I don't use sleeping bags anymore. I've just found them very cumbersome and uh, I'd rather use the, the blankets because I find the blankets are just more utilitarian because I can make literally a shelter out of it or a, a, a cloth to go over my shoulders or just into a bedroll. So anyway, it's just how I've developed as a, as a, as a happy camper. Anyways, what I got going here is two blankets put on top of each other one two they're both the wool military ones i got them spread out uh, so they are pretty much the same size on top of them right now i have them um you can do this with no padding or anything like that just directly on the ground i always recommend a piece of canvas to keep the the ground off of you Right now I've got an elk skin and a deer skin stretched out, so that's my, consider my padding for, for this, what's going on right now. So, take my two ends and I flip over the edges, thusly. And what that does is that kind of just traps my feet together. 
so my feet won't slide out. My feet aren't hanging out into the cold when I go to bed. I take one piece, fold it over, fold it over. Same thing again, fold it over just like that. And then uh, slide into it. That's, that's, that's your basic, basic, basic bedroll. Nothing fancy, just that's how easy it is. Now, to get fancy, I've seen some guys, they will take what they're called as penannulars. They're like giant safety pins, um, period safety pin things, and they will pin the, pin the edges down here. So that stays as one piece. And uh, you can even put a penannular up there as well. So it's more like a functional sleeping bag. Now, I'll take you through a, different, a couple different steps of how I get comfortable. And uh, this is what I consider the basics. Okay, for us bigger guys, you know, fold the, fold the legs and slide in there and kind of bring the blanket over as best as you can. That is the typical way. Now, for, for me, I generally don't do the bundled sleeping bag. I literally throw a wool blanket down on the ground and pull another wool blanket on top of me, just like I would like a regular bed. That's how I, that's how I do it. That's how I camp. Um, then again, you know, I'm 250 pounds, so this fat boy don't fit into regular sized uh, bed rolls uh, unless I have super large blankets, which I don't. So this is how I do it. Um, is that doable? Yes, I'm sorry, I'm straightening the blanket out as I talk here. Yes, it's completely doable. Do I stay, stay cold um, or stay warm enough? Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the cheats, though, that I do is I bring my two edges here and I fold them. Sorry, I'm trying to do this one hand of the camera. I fold them under each other like that. And then I will bring my two edges under like that, kind of create a small pocket. And the pocket is simply to keep my feet in. And then I will crawl under this. And this this gives me way more room. Um, and with this setup, I'll generally use a third blanket to go over top of me. But this gives us larger guys a little more room, foot room and everything like that as well. So that's, that's the simple setup for that. So uh, that's a simple bedroll. Um, generally when I'm doing that, um, I pack furs with me. Um, right now I'm on a elk skin and a deer skin. So this will give me a little bit of padding. Um, what I'll do is I'll continue this and show you a little bit more tomorrow um, and I will kind of upscale it. Um, my idea is I will show you with the same setup with the, the next. This is this is the basics. This is the general basics I go with. Um, even if I'm if I'm traveling in the back of a motorcycle or something like that, I will have a a kind of a uh, canvas on the ground. Um, but I have an inflatable air mattress, a little small one that I roll out. So I'll touch bases on that as well and go up, go up this scale with comfort. Um, so and show you kind of how I do a period look. Um, you can argue a apocalyptic look, but I'll show you how I do it. And uh, rather than bringing sleeping bags and how, how I get away with it, you know. But this is my this is the lightweight summer version. It is. It is getting dark right now. It's probably pushing 8 o'clock, and uh, it's still probably close to 90 degrees out. So I'm not too worried about getting cold. But when you do camp, you know, besides keeping the skeeters off of you, um, I found that um, about 4 o'clock in the morning, it does get cold. You want a blanket to cool up over you. So this is just the most simplest, easy, easiest way to do that. But uh, I'll do a couple more um, and show you the... The upscale up from it later on, but um, 
this is just the the general bed roll blanket roll that uh that i do when i go do period camping uh, i just want to touch base with them just show you how easy it is it's not that difficult at all um no fancy bedding or anything like that two wool blankets and uh, a couple furs that i can throw on the ground just for comfort that's it anyways i'll talk to you later So, I lied. There's enough light out. I had the cot up, but this is a low-profile cot. And uh, I, if I have the space, this is the one object I like to bring with me. Because when you're out camping, sleeping with a little bit of comfort, it makes all the difference in the world. It really does. So, this piece is I throw on my furs and then uh, throw the blankets on. Back in a second. Okay, so I've thrown the furs on top of the low profile cot. Um, I generally pull them so when I'm doing period camping or I can't even say period camping now. When I have this out, I'm usually at a fair or something where I want it to look as period. It's, it's looking period as I can go. And uh, so I'll throw the furs on and pull them over so they disguise the cot. But when it's there, the next step is basically throwing on the blankets. Okay, basically, <laughs> there it is. It's what the blankets put onto it. Um, if you sandwich them, it's even better. But um, if you fold your bottom blanket in half with your furs on there, and then throw you on a sing. I've, I found that in the summertime, it's just a single a single wool blanket will keep you warm enough. Keep the skeeters off you. Keep the keep the you know the breezes off you. You should be fine. If you really get that cold, you can sandwich the thing and, and sandwich the two pieces into a sandwich and crawl in between them. But uh, I've never found it to get that cold in the summertime, at least for me. But there's the next evolutionary step of bed rolls, sleeping with wool blankets and all that fun stuff but uh there it is caught wool blankets it's how i camp um it just i don't worry about the sleeping bags it has a period look to it um and i just it's where have I, i've evolved over the days anyways that's that's the next step there figured i'd show you while i'm out doing this stuff Take care. Talk to you later.